Good afternoon, and welcome to episode number 603. The topic today is um, dating and the shiny object syndrome. So we're going to have some fun with that today. So before I jump into the topic and everything else, let me introduce myself, give you the framework. My name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful, and high-achieving women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is what inspired these talks that I started two years and a bit ago, called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. So today we're now at number 603, so I've done a few of these. And the topic that came up for me thinking about what I was going to talk about today is dating and the shiny object syndrome. And I'm going to use this intentionally to hopefully shake loose some of the falsehoods that people are going to live under when it comes to relationships. I should say to dating especially. And I'm guilty of it too in some cases, and I'll own up to that at some point <laughs> during these talks. So thanks for joining me. And by the way, if you're watching this live, it's on Facebook first, it's on YouTube second. So if you're watching on YouTube, it's the replay. And I'll do my best if I, to endeavor to read any comments people post during the feed on Facebook so that we know who I'm talking to and responding to and replying to. I should say what I'm replying to. Uh, but, oh yes, one more housekeeping thing. This is done at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week which is why I'm doing it live right now. And if you're watching the replay some other time, it was live at 5 p.m. Pacific time on Facebook Live on my personal page. And I'll give you the links for all that stuff at the back end of the broadcast. So, shall we jump in? Let's jump in, shall we? So, dating and the shiny object syndrome. Now, if you don't know what the shiny object syndrome is, it's really um, one of the best, best stories I've heard about this is the story of the jackdaw. Now, the jackdaw is a... Um, relative of the crow, actually a close relative, um, in between raven and, and, and stuff. Anyway, ravens are, have it too, but basically what these birds have in common is they live by the shiny object syndrome. And I mean specifically is they have an eye for things that shine, that bright, that flicker. They've been known to steal stuff out of people's yards and houses that are nice and sparkly. It's a thing they're driven by. So the jackdaw and, 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 and also the raven too, because the raven's actually the bigger relative to the crow, are fascinated by these things. And so the, the, the shiny object syndrome really is kind of that thing. It's that single focus of something sparkly. Now, let me put that into the arena of human beings for a moment, is that we have the same sort of thing driving us. And men especially deal with this because we have a challenge in the sense that most men wired in the masculine alignment, so to speak, have a generally single focused awareness. So we focus on one thing at a time sequentially, as opposed to the feminine energy, which is mostly in women. Again, I'm using mostly, not all, because it's not all. The feminine energy is more diffuse awareness, more widespread um, perspective to see several things at once. And that means that instead of being things in sequence, it's more simultaneous. So that's why Ladies and gents, if you're in a relationship with a partner and the guy is watching the TV from the couch, he may not hear a word you're saying when you're talking to him because he's single focus. It's not a bad thing, it's just that that's a skill set that does come in handy. It's really annoying when he's not listening to you though. I understand that. Anyway, that's getting off topic. Let me bring it back. So, shiny object syndrome specifically does affect men more than women because we tend to get single focus, as I mentioned. And that laser focus we have can be easily distracted by something shiny. Now, metaphorically speaking, in relationships, and I'll get to that in a moment, it's a different animal, but different thing, not animal. But I want to use this term here because I want you to become aware of how distracting we can be. Now, women have it too, to a different, different degree, and I'm going to use some of the stereotypical explanations to give you some framing, and then I'll, I believe, because it's not scripted, I'll believe I'll come up with some solutions. So, for men particularly in the masculine, we're easily distracted by what is on our list of attractive things. <clears throat> because the thing is, not all men are wired the same. So using totally physical terminology here, some men are attracted to the shape of a woman's butt, some men are attracted to the way she, where a woman's legs are, or to the way her breasts are, or her flat stomach, or her hair a certain way, or her eyes. So we have, as men, like usually one or two things that are primary attracting um, criteria for women. Now, ladies, you have the same thing too, not quite as um, clearly defined, but it's certainly a high priority list. And the challenge is that what happens, it, 
or should say what happens for us men especially is you might be attracted to a woman because it's the, one of those high, like, high rating criteria stand out for us and so we get myopically focused on that thing not not like gazing right at it but looking at the whole person through that lens and what I mean specifically is for example in the past I'm going to be I'm going to be transparent here it's going to be painful probably we'll see in the past I've been very distracted and attracted by women's breasts like like a lot of men I'm not the only man who does that but sometimes I've been attracted to a woman ignoring other parts of her because she has a very presentable upper body I'm trying to be discreet on the languaging I'm not doing too well at this so <laughs> it took me this is this is a lot younger and it's still in my awareness I'm very aware that I notice women's shapes is part of my visual experience because I like looking at women just be transparent about it but sometimes I look at women and I notice their shape but then I'm also I have this ability now thankfully with some training as a practice and a maturity as well just to be clear about it that when I notice a woman's appearance and that particular aspect of her appearance gets my attention, I'm getting better at saying, hang on a second, let me just take a look at the whole person. Let me feel into who she is before I proceed. And especially lately, because I was talking to a friend of mine and she's doing a lot of talking about this now with the, um, it's the, the BIIS, I think it is, which is the Breast Implant Infection Syndrome. Syndrome? I think it's that. I think it's BIIS. If you haven't heard about this, ladies, and if you've had implants, check it out. Um, because a friend of mine who had implants done not that long ago, less than 10 years, is having some serious issues with the leakage and side effects. And she's now on, on a campaign to wake women up to who have had implants to have them removed. So because of that, especially, and also because of other women too, I've also tempered my own um, shiny object focus, so to speak. So let me put back into context. I went off a little bit off track there. So the shiny object, object syndrome is basically we get latched onto one thing about the other person. I mean, we're more, more, more generic now. Because women and men both have this ability. Men more than women, because again, we're more single focused. So we'll notice the one thing that gets our attention. It could be the way she flips her hair. It could be the car she drives even, which is not usually the case for men. It may be additive, but usually the primary focus is about her physical beingness. That's generally what triggers men's responses energetically. Sorry, I had a thought about putting something in, but it doesn't belong here. Okay, leave that one out. Ladies, you have the same thing too, and it's not necessarily the same way. Yes, some women are very much drawn to men's appearance. Some men like a man who has no hair on top. Some men like, some women like a man who has all hair on top. I'm in the middle, so, you know, whatever. Uh, <laughs> but also some, some women are drawn to men who have strong hands, or the shape of their mouth, or the shape of their shoulders and, and their, their torso. Women have the same thing where the shiny object attracts them. And I'll speak to you especially about this because for men, it's in our DNA. Or we're well, not in our DNA, but it's in our masculine beingness. So we're laser focused and that's what we're attracted to, which is fine. The challenge is what do we do with it? And it's for both genders. When we get caught up in that single focus thing, especially when it's physical based, first of all, to burst the bubble, for those people looking for a long-term relationship, for a lifetime spending with time that person, a lot of the things you're looking at as those shiny objects will evolve, change, and disappear over time. The perfect, perfect skin that somebody will have will age over years. So they may look the same in 10, 20, 30 years. The size of a woman's breast may change or, or position might change over years. The, the shape of a man's stomach might change over years too. All these different things that we may be fixated on won't be there in 10, 20 years the way we thought. So I'll get to that in a moment. So the, tra the challenge for us is to stop, not so much stop using that as a primary focus, but to use that as a reminder to stop and look and see more of the picture. Because for most of us, we don't look at the whole picture when it comes to looking at relationships. When we meet some of the opposite sex we're attracted to, we usually latch on to one or two or three things about that person that goes, oh, they're cool. That's the shiny object. When we step free of that, and when we actually take the time to look at that person as a whole being, and especially when you watch them interacting with other people, you tend to get to find out what more that, what they're usually like. Are they do they have disdain for other people? Are they sucking up to other people? Are they kind to that person? Are they aware of the other person? All these different things become telltale signs where this person has the skills or the um, interpersonal relationship skills that you want in a partnership. So 
the solution, so to speak, is if you're someone who is, um, I want to say fixate is the wrong word, but I'm looking for another word, who is absolutely um, laser focused, perhaps is the way of putting it. But if you're someone who is distracted explicitly by a certain trait of the opposite sex or the order of sex you're attracted to, and it's true for men or women, if you notice that you have one or two things that always attract you to somebody you're interested in and you probably know from experience that if that's the only thing that pulled you in it'll be very clearly the only thing that will hold you there which means you'll be leaving pretty soon i have seen people i know um I, actually i know i know a couple of guys who married women because of the way they looked their physical bo- being this and 10 years later they divorced them because they because the woman didn't have the same shape in 10 years they had a couple of kids or they weren't working out the same or they just got a little bit older so they weren't the same youthful 20 something year old shape if you're married for that reason that reason is going to go away and you want everything to hold on to energetically speaking that is so it's important to know up front what you're looking for again i'm using i'm using the term dating in this title but really i'm talking about relationship or intending for dating to become relationship the trap we fall into is thinking the person we meet is the person that's always going to be there that way the parts that stay the same is inside generally speaking i really got to put a caveat on that because for most people, their personality is who they are and how they'll be and for who they carry through life. Now, things change that over time because things can happen, traumas or experiences or, high, or, or transformational work can change them so you see things differently. But generally speaking, if you, get, if you meet someone at the baseline of who they are, is someone that you care about and you like because they're kind or they're caring or they're strong or they're friendly or whatever that is for you, hold on to that because that's the quality that relationship can be built on the inner qualities, the, the, exper- the, the experience and the emotional connection. The dance we play with the physical can be extremely challenging to have long term. Because if you look at your own body, you know, and touch self over time, you're not the same, you don't look the same physically as you did 20 years ago. So if you look at that for other people, that person you were attracted to 20 years ago who had that amazing body, if that's what you're attracted to, that visual eye candy slash shiny object, then you'll be stuck when they don't have it one extra ps on that one for the ladies who are attracted to men because they have lots of money there are a few of the people out there none of the, nobody nobody follows me has that one going on but women who are attracted to men have lots of money i know that when the crash happened in 2008 there were all divorces because the that's that that shiny object of the, what the woman could get from him went away we, we lost all his money so it's not just the physical appearance it's the physical accessories. And this is the thing probably is best of all, the big piece of all. The shiny object syndrome applicable to this situation when you're dating is usually something that's tied to a moment in time, a physical experience, a piece of, um, how to say this? A, a transitory piece, maybe, way of putting it? It's one of those questions, I, one of those things I want to speak on because the dance we have in relationships is often evolving because we change. And so if you get tied to that shiny object that doesn't stay the same, you may well to be disappointed six months, eight months, a year, two years, five years down the road. So making your choices very clearly about who you're attracting that isn't about whether you have this one quality. It's better to expand your, um, your vision to be more inclusive. I'll put it that way. That's a simple way of putting it. I think that's about it. It's interesting when I do these talks, by the way. If you don't see my talks, they tend to run about 15 minutes or so because they start and then when the information is done, they stop. <laughs> I just trust it because it's not in my control. So I hope this has been of use to you. This this is a, a key, I think, for a lot of people about relationship choosing is doing it for a much deeper reason than just to go to go meet somebody whose eyes appeal and something else appeals when there's more to the package. And having seen enough relationships that fell apart because the personality clashed, even though they look great together, there's more to the puzzle than just that. So, and of course you probably know this already, but I wanted to play with the idea of the shiny object syndrome because truthfully, a lot of us do run that paradigm and I've done it myself when we meet somebody of the opposite sex we're interested in. We get very pulled in by one thing or two things and we're totally oblivious to everything else. And that, my friends, is an error in approach. It can be fun, but if you're looking for long term, there's a better option, which I mentioned. So having said all that, I thank you for watching my broadcast. Thanks for being with me once again. And I'll give you the links I mentioned. This is Facebook Live first on my personal page, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Then goes on to my YouTube channel. 
and then on to my um, uh, podcast. So I'll give you the replays. So Facebook personal page, 5 p.m. Pacific time, join me live, which is ba- facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. Secondly, um, on, my, uh, YouTube, on my business page where I store the replays, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby dot author. You can also watch me on YouTube if you're not watching me there. These, that's where the replays get put. You can't interact live, but you can certainly put comments in. And by the way, anything about this topic you want to put in below, please respond in the comments and I'll re- respond after I sign off. Um, replays on YouTube, which is my channel is Barry Selby. Please subscribe. And the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. And then on my podcast, I have a podcast where I'm putting out the audio versions of these broadcasts. You can find them there on um, iTunes under Messages from the Masculine the podcast. Please subscribe to that. And you can download the audio versions when you want. Um, if you are a woman who's been looking for love in all the wrong places or have been playing with shiny object syndrome, I'm going to put a link in the comments to my Attract the Man You Want program because it will help you get clear. Um, and if you want help in the area of relationship period, I'll put a link in for my discovery session so you can find out about how to work with me. That'll do for now. Okay, links, replays, find everything else, topic. I think we're done. I <laughs> appreciate you being with me as always. If you have any questions about love and romance, please message me, send me a link if you want to share anything about yourself. Um, and I will be back in tomorrow, number 604. That'll be 5 p.m. Pacific time, Saturday. And if you haven't seen my broadcast before, I do invite you to watch my replays because they're all over the place now, as I mentioned the links. And uh, I think that's about it. I invite you to look at your own life and your own choices to see where you've been, where you fall in the trap of the sin of the shiny object syndrome because it might be time to climb out of that and choose differently thanks for watching thanks for being with me have fun tonight have a good, i hope you have a good time it's friday night get out and play and i'll see you again tomorrow at the same time same channel bye <laughs>